This is lesson one on the cross. When the Lord talks about the cross, it's the one he was crucified on. Cross means crucifixion. It represents suffering, humility, surrender, and obedience. Jesus said, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. But there is no abundant life without the cross, or there's no abundant life without suffering, or humility, or surrender in obedience. And love was never so expressed without the cross. The word says, no greater love than this, than a man, man lay down his life for his friend. We are to follow his footsteps, and they do lead to the cross. God gives us a, a vision of the best first. He gives, gives us a vision of the best. Um, we're going to see what it will be like being in the bride and going to the new city and having eternal life in his presence. He shows, he stretches us out a vision of being in the bride. He, he shows us uh, in the word the rewards of being in the new city and having eternal life in his presence. The Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy. It says uh, that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. That's a, that is a powerful verse. I'll read it a little bit slower. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. So the Lord in the beginning, when you first get saved or introduced to him, the Lord lifts us up and gives us a taste by gift. Then he brings us back down and introduces us to the suffering of going on for God or the cross. Take up your cross. He introduces us to the sufferings because it rules out the insincere and the proud. In Mark 10, we're going to look at the reward of the cross. And the first reward in taking up the cross, uh, we're going to look at this here in Mark 10, 17 through 22. I'm going to read it. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I um, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever things thou hast, or sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. So the first reward uh, in taking up the cross, we're going to see the young man ran. He really wanted to hear some more word until the cross got into the picture. The cross separates those who are insincere and those who really mean business. The young man kneeled, seemingly surrendered. Then he inquired. The young man wanted this life, this eternal life. And Jesus said in so many words, well, this life comes through the cross or suffering and humility and obedience. So every time we die daily and nail our carnal mind to the cross, we come up with more life. Verse 21, he said, Sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. 
So Jesus gave him a taste, lifted him up, and said, Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Then he introduced the cross. And the word says in verse 22 that the young man went away sorrowful. He went away over the word that he heard over the cross, not the treasure in heaven part. He liked that part. Some come to the word and embrace the cross and say, Lord, show me myself and how I'm not like Jesus. I want to do right. Show me myself. The cross is a rewarder. It says that um, you follow him, you pick up your cross, you'll have treasure in heaven. But you don't have to wait to get to heaven to get some of this treasure for sure. Bible says where your heart is, there will also be your treasure. So if your heart is in love with his word, then you find it a, a treasure to learn about yourself and how to deal with it. When you're carrying the cross, he stores up the treasure. And when you get in prayer and in heavenly places, he starts to give you treasures of the word. So his cross of surrender, obedience, um, but carrying his cross helps us uh, carry ours when we carry his. Now we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 2, talking about the rewarder. We, get, we can get in on the treasure now in Ephesians 2 verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. So the next reward in carrying his cross is oneness or unity. Through the cross, enmity is slain. The cross can uh, settle an age-old enmity between the Jew and the Gentile. The cross can do that with us now. The cross makes us um, see our wrong attitude. The cross yokes us together, makes us one. Outside of the cross, there is no unity or abundant life. You could nurse your bad feelings and let them mount up, or you can apply the cross. Apply surrender to the headship of God, that he is head over all things, and all things work together for good to those who love God. No way you can embrace the cross and hold on to the enmity at the same time. It doesn't work that way. The cross slays enmity and brings harmony talking about the reward in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, third reward of the cross is humility. Let this mind be in you. Well, I'm going to read from Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We, we learn that that word mind means interest, the same interest. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to eat, be equal with, with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So the third reward of the cross is humility. Some people say, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm tired of being pushed down, I'm just fed up with it. But at this point, if we will bow before the cross and start crawling up, humility will invade your heart and you'll come up with a, yes, Lord, whatever it takes. Outside the cross, bitterness will take over. Before God introduces us to suffering, he introduces us to the rewards. And the rewards help us bear the suffering. It says that concerning the Lord, and for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So we see the rewards of treasure in heaven, which is oneness, humility, and peace. Colossians 1, verse 20. And heaven made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in heaven, or rather things in earth, or things in heaven. All right, that's Colossians 1.20. Reconcile, change thoroughly. 
change thoroughly. And it says that uh, having made peace, uh, peace means absence of agitation or warfare. Peace means absence of nervousness. We get nervous because we are not peaceful inside. Some of our hardest problems are in our home life. And looking at things apart from the cross and apart from the cross, they look pretty bad. Things become even dreadful and they just eat, eat you up inside. The cross speaks of suffering and that's where we should take our suffering and that is the cross. That's where it belongs. If we look at his, suf his suffering, then our suffering doesn't seem so bad after all, of course. So we kneel before the cross and get peace in our heart. Those same things we dreaded, they don't look so bad anymore. The Bible says God will reconcile all things. He'll change all things. These are rewards of the cross now. So as we apply the blood, the fire, the water, it works death to the flesh and gives us living waters to the soul. The cross signifies the end of our human ability. When we are wor worrying about our loved ones, then we are trying to take on that burden by ourselves. We need to take our cares and leave them at the foot of the cross. When we kneel at the cross, we are signifying that we are trusting him. And the weight and the burden that we had should be laid on him who bears our burdens if we will just let him. When we are at the cross, we know, we know it by our surrender and our surrendered attitude and our humility to bow down before him and acknowledge that we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. The Lord said, take up your cross daily and follow me. And his footsteps will eventually lead to resurrection. We know that. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of those uh, that diligently seek him. So let us take our suffering to the cross and nail our worries and our cares and leave them there and trust God to do whatever it is you're asking him according to his will. Trust is a major issue, so you've got to go to the cross. You kneel down, you look up with that great stature, knowing that he's head over all things, and lay your burden down and get up, and you should be free. If you're still worrying, you're still bearing the burden on your own, and you're not trusting God. You've got to come to the place that humanly speaking beyond redemption by anything that we have to offer so we must trust in him he's the only one that can do it so when the lord talks about the cross it's the one he was crucified on speaking of crucifixion suffering humility surrender and obedience and this is the way that we get abundant life and there is no abundant life without um Humility, no abundant life without surrender and obedience. So this is a short lesson on the cross. Very, um, a very strong lesson. It, it is another governmental principle that will rule and reign over the darkness in our life. And believe me, there's plenty of it. So that's my lesson on the cross. 